Alexander Armstrong, and a very happy Christmas to you all. Welcome to this special Christmas number one's edition of Pointless Celebrities, the show where the aim of the game is to avoid the obvious answers and find the obscure ones. Let's meet this evening's Pointless Celebrities. <laughs> and couple number one. I'm Dave Hill from Slade, and I'm known for a very special Christmas number one. I'm Rob Davis from Mud. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Couple number two. I'm Sally Lindsay. I'm an actress, and I had a number one hit, Christmas, in 1980. Uh, I'm Roger McGough, and um, I'm a poet, and I was one third of the scaffold uh, before your time, Sandy, and we had a hit called Lily the Pink. Number three. Hi, I'm Sonia. I'm a singer. I'm probably mo most well known for my Stock Ake and Waterman singles. I was also on Band Aid 2 with Do They Know It's Christmas in 1989. I'm Jamelia. I'm a singer and TV personality, and I was on Band Aid 20. <laughs> and finally, couple number four. Hello, I'm Sarah, and this is my partner in crime, Karen, and we're from Banana Armour. And we were on the original Band-Aid, Do They Know It's Christmas, in 1984. <laughs> and the second one also, I've just realised. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, all of you. A very warm welcome to Point. It's lovely to have you with us. We'll get to chat much more, obviously, throughout the show as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He's a gift from the people of Norway. It's my pointless <laughs> friend. <laughs> it's Richard. <laughs> Hi, uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas to you, Merry sir. Merry Christmas That reminds to you. me, I need to go and put the star on top of that tree in Trafalgar Square. I do it yeah. every year. Um, <laughs> oh. Anyway, what a lovely lineup. Loads of Christmas hits uh, between them as well. Sally Lindsay's Christmas hit. Uh, can you guess what it is? We'll find out, I suspect, when we get to Sally. We've also got a few people who played before with us, uh, all of whom have done very well. Sonia and Roger, you both got through to a head-to-head, -head, which in any other show would be quite impressive. But uh, Karen and Sarah have got through to a final uh, together as well. In any other show, even that would be impressive, except we are in the presence of a pointless jackpot winner, Mr Dave Hill, there on oh. podium <laughs> one. A uh, lovely, wintry first round for oh, you today as well. It's just a joy from start to finish. Now, as today's show is a celebrity special, each of our celebrities is therefore playing for a nominated charity, so we therefore start off with a jackpot of £2,500. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play pointless. Now, all you have to remember is this. It's the pair with the highest score at the end of each round that gets eliminated. So keep your scores nice and low and you'll be absolutely fine. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this evening is... Wintry Geography. Oh, no. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, and our Wintry Geography round concerns... It's my worst subject. <laughs> Cities in the snow. Richard? Yeah, on each board, we're going to show you nine pictures of cities uh, in the snow. We'll give you the first letters of those cities as well. Can you name the most obscure city you can? There'll be nine on the first pass, then a different nine on the second pass. <laughs> 18 and all to guess at home. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we're going to show you an image uh, with nine cities in the snow. Here comes the image. Top line, I-L-B. Middle line, C-S-R. And bottom line, W-D-C-R-K. Wow. Wow. There we are. Nine cities in the snow. Now then, Dave, welcome back to Pointless. Do you know what I discovered about Slade, which I didn't know before? Yeah. Was that you were managed by Chaz Chandler. Yeah. Yeah, managed to... Jimi Hendrix manager, yeah. Exactly. When, yeah. Did, you, when did you get together? When did you start being managed by him? Did you overlap well, um, with Jimmy? It, it was almost like a, a scene out of a movie, actually, but <laughs> we were booked into a, a, a club called the Rasputin. Uh, a guy um, who, who was an agent said, I'm going to put you there. This man, uh, Chess Chandler, wants to come and see you. He heard about this, you see. And, and so we thought, oh, my, Chess Chandler, you know. So we're on this tiny stage and he comes down with his wife and he's just sitting there, you know, and we were just playing away there. and. I can't do the actual moment, but you, you know when you see a film and somebody goes, 
comes along with a cigar and goes, I think you're wonderful. <laughs> and I'd love to manage you. And within a moment of him looking at me, he said, I've got a great idea for you, Dave. We'll get the biggest guitar going. You'll look brilliant on you. You're so small. <laughs> <laughs> so you did. Um, what would you like to go for out of our wintry cities here? It's always a little bit strange because I've probably been to these places. Can I go for L? <laughs> you are going to go for L. Is that London? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but uh, I don't want to lose. No, fair enough. Fair enough. London, it says, Dave. Let's see how many of our 100 people got that. <laughs> 94, Dave. Very well done. Good don't like to lose. Around. <laughs> you, you know when you said you didn't want to lose, Dave. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody what else. <laughs> Love I'd to love know. to see. I'd love to see six people looking at that, going, no, I, "I sort of familiar, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't quite know." Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Roger, welcome back. Wonderful uh, to have you with us again. Number one in 1968. 68, it was yes. 68 yes. with Lily the Pig. I was a, I was a boy child at the time. <laughs> so, how did the scaffold come together? Um, well, we were working in Liverpool. I was writing sketches, and I met John Gorman, Mike McCartney. Uh, became Mike McGear, and we worked together, did some poetry-based sketches, stuff like that, went to Edinburgh festivals. And then at one point, uh, Brian Epstein became our manager. Wow. And so you're making songs and things. And so yeah. Lily the Pink came out of that. I mean, there are lots of stories about what Lily the Pink might actually be about, but what, what is it about? Well, it was a song uh, I used to sing at university uh, based on a true story about a woman called Lydia Pinkham, who was an American... Snake oil lady, you know, she sold this stuff that made, it was good for you and uh, cured everything. And there was a song, a very rude song we used to sing, and we sort of cleaned it up. <laughs> <laughs> for the BBC. Uh, Roger, what would you like to go for of our snowy cities? Mm, okay, um, I'll go for B Berlin. B Berlin, says Roger. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for Berlin. Berlin is right, 62 for Berlin. Very well played, Roger. I would have thought that would score less than that. Hmm. Wouldn't you? People really recognise Berlin for some reason. Oh, but they do. I bet none of the six people who didn't recognise London recognised Berlin. Um, <laughs> Jamelia, Hi. welcome to Hello. Pointless. It's, it's lovely to have you here, Jamelia. Lovely um, to be now, here. You have, you've got three kids, I know. Yes, I have, yeah, now. <laughs> What's Christmas like in, in your household? Um, I am the Christmas fairy of my household. I love Christmas. I am everything, Christmas jumpers, Christmas trees, everything glittery. Um, I mean, what's the one, is there one thing you think is, is just that swims into mind, do you think? Is it, about, is it all about the food? Is it about the music, maybe? Without sounding really soppy, I think it's just the fact that you get to spend so much time with your family and as a family and surrounded by love. I just love it. Oh, <laughs> oh, <Sam. laughs> yeah. oh Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> we, should, we should just end the show there because it's not going to get any more Christmassy no. than that. <laughs> Actually, it is going to get more Christmassy because you're singing at the end, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. I am. I'm going to yeah. be, yeah. Yes. I'm looking forward to that. Mm. Um, now, Jamelia. Yes. Um, we're into these winterscapes. Yeah. Here. Right. I feel like I'm taking a big risk. Um, I'm a big fan of a show called Grey's Anatomy, and it's set in Seattle. And I'm sure there's something about that needle that says it's Seattle. So I'm going to go with S. Seattle. Yeah. Let's see how many of our 100 <laughs> people said Seattle. If this is right, I think it'll, it'll pay off. Oh, oh, no! Oh, no, oh. I'm sorry, Jamelia. That... It's OK. No, we salute that. That's the kind of play we I like. Thought that's... I thought it was the needle. OK. Um, the good news is it is the wrong answer, but you're still only six points ahead of Dave, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Sarah, welcome back to Pointless. Thank you so much. Oh, can we talk about that first Band-Aid single? I mean, so much I want to know about that day. Yes, where well... Did, well, where did you record it first? I don't know. It was in was London, it? North London. Is South it, London. Was it yeah. West London? West London. Oh, it was West London. There we are. Okay. Yeah, we shared an office with uh, Bob Geldof, who obviously put it together. Yeah. And it was on a Sunday, so on the Saturday night, we had all been out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, they just called us up and said, can you get to this studio? The next one, we were like, oh. And then we got there and we saw Sting and George Michael and all these sort of you two. All, all coming up into, into this room. And, uh, yeah, the day was amazing. Great calls. And um, 
what a, what a song, I mean. What a song. Did you have any idea what, what its impact was going to be? Not at all. I mean, That's firstly, cool. we all got there and we didn't even know what we were doing. And then to, to realise what it was and how big it got and how, how brilliant it was. Amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Um, Sarah, you're the last person to have this board. Only two things have been guessed there. Do you, want to, do you feel like talking us through all the others? Would it be Istanbul? Is it Washington, D.C.? Or oh, is that completely wrong? I'm going to go for K. I'm hoping it's Kyoto. Yes? Can I go for that? Yeah, of course you can. Good. You're going to say Kyoto. <laughs> Kyoto. For K, let's see how many of our 100 people said Kyoto. Is it right? It is oh. Kyoto. Well, 100 is the high score. 94 and then 62. You pass all of those. 80. <laughs> Very well done indeed. 18 for Kyoto. Well played, Sarah. It's a great answer. Well done for going for it as well. Um, that takes some guts. It's a very low scorer. Shall we go through the rest of these? You're quite right yes. about the top left as well. It is Istanbul. That would have scored you 28 points. Just below that? Cambridge. It's Cambridge. That would have scored 23. Now, S, it does look like the Seattle skyline. You see at the front start of Fraser and all that kind of stuff. It looks very similar. And lots of people would have said it because it's a very low scorer, this. Shanghai. Oh. Shanghai. Oh. Would have scored three points. Um, R. Rome. Rome, 89 points for Rome. Uh, WDC, quite right, Washington, DC. Would have scored 85. Another very oh, low score of this middle one. I've been there. Reykjavik. Reykjavik, yeah, oh, capital of Iceland. Mm -hmm. And that would have scored 12. Well done if you said that. Lovely. Thank you very much indeed, Reggie. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's have a quick look at those scores. 18, Sarah. Well done, you. Thank Brilliant you. play on Thank that you. far podium. 62 is where we find Roger and Sally looking pretty good too. 94, Dave and Rob. Nothing wrong with that <laughs> uh, when seen alongside <laughs> 100, which is where we find Shamelia and Sonia. Sonia, uh, we need a nice low score to keep you in the game. Good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put nine more pictures of cities under snow up on the board, and here they come. We have got P, E, N, Y, V, Q, C, B, M, A, L, V. There we are. So then, Karen, welcome back. Thank you. Good to have you. So back to that, that recording day. I mean, had you met all of those other people before when you we'd, turned up? We'd met some of them before. Um, we'd met Paul Weller and worked with Paul yeah. Weller and uh, we knew George Michael. Um, but very few of the other artists. Was it quite nerve-wracking, then? It was. And we, I mean, we were sort of the only girls with the exception of Jodie Watley but we yeah. did manage to make a racket on the, on the single you can definitely hear us <laughs> the old well, fish well, wife quality of singing and, but <laughs> people were there the whole day people didn't just do their bit and then drift off or no was there, we all, there was we a... all stayed and um, I, you know people sang their own bits and we all hung around and sang together so yeah and the song had pretty much just been written presumably Midge was sort of still yeah, making think, bits I up I think they were still were. making up as they went along oh, yeah it's incredible Incredible. Now, there you are. You're on 18. If you can score 81 or less, you are into round two. I'm going to play it pretty safe um, and go Moscow, I think. Moscow. Moscow. Yes. Uh, here is your red line. If you can get below that with Moscow, you are through to the next round. How many people said Moscow? Moscow's right through. You go to round two. Down it goes to 70. Not bad at all. 88 is your total. Yeah, very well played. 70 points for Moscow. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Sonia, welcome back. Great to um, be back. Great to have <laughs> you here. Going back then to do Band-Aid 2, how did you all decide what to do? Um, it, was, it was just the most amazing day, meeting all the, you know, beautiful, beautiful stars there, and it was wonderful, and for all of us to come together as well. It was it was amazing, and we all harmonised together and seen what worked best, and uh, the day was just an iconic day. It was great. Wonderful. Now, Sonia, there you are. You're on 100. You're the high scorers at the moment, but we need a low score from you to keep you Sorry. in the game. I know. You know what? I don't know whether to have a stab at one that I don't really know, or... Oh, forgive me, Jamelia. No, that's um, fine. I don't know whether this is right or not. Is that Quebec? So it's QC. Can you give us the other word? Quebec City. Quebec City for the middle one, QC. Um, there's no red line for you as you are the high scorers. Let's see what happens when we say Quebec. Quebec City. 
It's right. It's a great answer. Down it goes to 19. Very well done indeed. 119 is your total. Well played, Sonia. Terrific answer. Yeah, very nicely done. It's the only walled city in Canada, Quebec City. Thank you very much indeed. Richard. Now, Sally, welcome. Hello. Welcome to the show. Great to have you here. Of course, everybody here is, is here because they, are in, they were involved in a Christmas number one. Yeah. Um, most people are thinking, well, hang on, we know Sally from Corrie. But actually, you were part of a Christmas number one as well. What was your Christmas number one? It was 1980. I was in a choir called St. Winifred School Choir. And we sang, Grandma, We Love You. Exactly. And I St. Winifred School Choir. <laughs> I know! I'm here, you, you were number one. You kept uh, John Lennon and Yoko Ono off number one. I did, not purposely. No, <laughs> but you did. I was but seven. Where was St Winifred School? <laughs> so it was in uh, Stockport, near Manchester, and uh, they'd just done a hit single called Matchstock Men and Matchstock Cats and Dogs. Yeah, I remember. And somebody decided to make a bit of money. And we got us all together and we sang this little song, Grandma, We Love You, and everybody bought it for their grandmas. And, you know, we made, like, seven albums after that. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, it was. Are you, are you still touring? I totally am, yeah, with the, with the guys. Yeah. We are like, yeah, no. Um, <laughs> but it was, yeah, it was a great experience for a kid. I mean, we did all the big shows at the time. Oh, I bet, You know, yeah. nationwide. Yeah, I remember. remember. <laughs> I remember. Pebble Mill at one, all yeah. the hits. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it was fabulous. I loved it, but, yeah. Uh, now then, Sally, you are... Oh, this is hard, You're on 62. It? We See, it's dead easy at home. 56 or less keeps you in the game. <sighs> 56 or less. What do you think? I think I'm going to go for... Um, I think I'm going to go for Las Vegas. OK, Las Vegas. Las Vegas. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Las Vegas. There's your red line. It's probably wrong, isn't it? It's right. Look at that, very well done indeed. Down it goes to 38, superb. Hey! Very good. Takes your total up to a nice round 100. Beautiful. Very well played, Sally. Yeah, there can't be many cities in the world that have a pyramid with a laser coming out <laughs> of the top of it. <laughs> sort of worked it out with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, So the clues are there if you look, aren't they? <laughs> uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. And Rob, welcome. Hi. Welcome. Yeah. Your number one was Lonely This Christmas yep. with Mud. You then went on to, to be almost at the very pinnacle of songwriting. Can't Get You Out of My Head, the Kylie hit, Groove Jet. Uh, these are songs that you've written. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if many people know that somebody who was playing Tiger Feet actually then went on to write these songs, which are regularly held up as the sort of the acme of songwriting. Um, you. What, was your, what was your route to that? I think through the 80s, um, I got more into studio side and songwriting. Yeah. And various publishing deals in it. And I met Paul Oakenfold, late 80s, who was a big DJ, and I sort of got into dance music via rock, really. You know. It's just incredible. Yeah. But then as a songwriter, I mean, did you produce either of those songs? Were you involved uh, in their production? Can't get it in my head, yes. See, that's a relief, because I think otherwise it'd be quite tough to yeah, hand it was, something over. It was my over. demo from my garage. But isn't that incredible? It's amazing. It's, I mean, it's such an extraordinary song. I mean, a number of your songs are absolutely... I mean, really, up there will be around forever and ever and ever, which is, must be such a lovely thing. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Very well done. Now, uh, 94 is your score at the moment, Rob. We need a score of 24 or less from you. Do you feel like talking us through these snowy cities? Well, Paris is top left, and New York right, and the others, I haven't got a clue. So I'm, I'm going for a Athens down the bottom. OK, you're going to go for Athens at the bottom there, the Acropolis. Let's see if that is Athens. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. There is your red line. Get below that with Athens. You're into round two. Athens is right. Oh, well. 71. Oh, oh, 71 takes your total up to 165. Yeah, it's unlucky. There's actually only one answer on the board that, that would have saved you after Sonia's brilliant answer, but we'll take a look at all of them. Now, I'll ask you to guess what the top left is, and then I'll, then I'll ask you to guess the score. OK. You've, you you recognise that? Paris. That is Paris. What do you think Paris Well, if the fact you're asking me this means it can't be 100. You'd imagine it would be most instantly... Re Surely maybe 100. Maybe it is. 100. 99. 99 uh, that would have scored. Bad. E is... Edinburgh. 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 That would have scored you 43. Uh, what do you think New York scored? Um, 97. 99 as well. Oh, that's good. I wonder if it's the same one person yeah. who didn't get both of those. <laughs> that's a worry if it is, isn't mm. it? Uh, v. Venice. Venice. 
Yeah, would have scored you the uh, would have scored you seventy eight. Now B is the answer that would have seen you into the next round. Rob, what did... Barcelona. It is Barcelona. Yeah, very well played. Mm -hmm. And Barcelona would have scored you 23 points. Very well done if you said that. So the best answer on the board, Sonia, is Quebec City. Well played. Yeah. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So at the end of our first round, we have to say goodbye to one of our pairs. Yeah, I'm bye. so sorry. Rob and Dave, you're our high scorers. Please come and play again. But Rob and Dave, meanwhile, thank no, you no, very thank much you for indeed. Asking me. Thank you. Thank you. Rob and Dave. But for the remaining three pairs, it is now time for round two. And there we are, suddenly down to three pairs. At the end of this round, we're going to have to say goodbye to another pair. Best of luck to you all for round two. Our category for round two this evening is... Festive music. <laughs> Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Synonyms of Christmas carols. <laughs> Richard? <laughs> On each board, we're going to show you the names of six famous Christmas carols, but we've written the titles using different words. They mean the same, but the words are different. Mm -hmm. Can you work out what these carols are, please? Six on the first board, six on the second. Twelve in all to have a go at home. Very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. So, we are looking for the actual carols, that, of which these are synonyms. Here is our first board of six. The initials of the real carol in brackets. Deity, relax the jolly chaps. G-R-Y-M-G. As herdsmen observed their droves during darkness, W-S-W-T-F-B-N. Festoon the foyer with branches of Willoughby. D-T-H-W-B-O-H. Vorderman from Godiva City. C-C. Oi, approach the whole devoted lot of you. O-C-A-Y-F. And soundless dark hours. S-N. Shall I read those again? Deity, relax thee, jolly chaps. G-R-Y-M-G. As herdsmen observed their droves during darkness, W-S-W-T-F-B-N, festooned the foyer with branches of Willoughby, D-T-H-W-B-O-H, Vorderman from Godiva City, C-C, Oi, approach the whole devoted lot of you, O-C-A-Y-F, and soundless dark hours, S-N. There we are, Sally. Oh, OK, hello. Sally, hello. Hello, Thunder. Um... Uh, OK, uh, I would go as herdsmen observe their droves during darkness um, while shepherds watch their flocks by night. While shepherds watch their flocks by night. Uh, Sally, let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Got that wrong. There we go, down to 38. Not bad at all, Sally. Good start to the round. 38 for while shepherds watch. Until 1782, that was the only Christmas carol you were allowed to sing. It's the only one officially sanctioned by the uh, by the Church of England. Wow. Oh, can you imagine how boring oh. the church <laughs> services are? Oh, man, and oh. people knocking on your door all singing that. Every <laughs> single one of them. And if they didn't, they got taken away by the authorities. <gasps> oh. Oy. If they started singing Jingle Bells, they went to prison. <laughs> um, thank you very much indeed. Now then, Sonia. Mm. Mm. How many of those do you think you've got a handle on? Ah, uh, mm. Oh, come all ye faithful. Oh, come all ye faithful. Let's see how many of our 100 people got that. He's right. 38 is the only score we have at the moment. You pass it. Look at that. 31. <laughs> 31 for oh, come all ye faithful. It's not as scary as it first looks this round, is it? You no, can sort of work them out not. yet. Um, the American heavy metal band Twisted Sister do a cover version of that on their uh, A Twisted Christmas album. <laughs> It'll be something to listen to. Thank you very much indeed. Now, Sarah. Sarah, this board's all yours. Do you want to talk us through it? OK, the top one, I think, is God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen. The third one is Deck the Halls with Boughs of Holly. Now, is that one Coventry Carol? Not that I've ever heard of that, but it just sounds like it. Um, and Silent Night. I'm going to go with CC. Coventry Carol. Oh. Coventry Carol. Let's see <laughs> no. if that's right for Vorderman from Godiva City. Let's see how many people said Coventry Carol. It oh. is the Coventry Carol. That's a very good And one. deservedly, that goes down to 14. Very well done. <laughs> Indeed, Sarah. Another great answer, another great risk as well. It sounds like someone's Tinder profile, Coventry Carol. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, 14 points. Shall we fit in the rest of these? Uh, Sarah's already done a, a nice job already. The uh, God rest you merry gentlemen would have scored you 27 points. Uh, Festoon the foyer, deck the halls of bows of holly, absolutely. That would have scored 29 points. Oh, holly would have been doing a lot of heavy lifting in that clue. Mm -hmm. uh, and Silent Night at the bottom there. The score is 65. So again, Sarah, best answer on the board. Coventry Carroll, well played. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. So we are halfway through the round. Let's have a look at those scores. 14, the best score of the past. Well done, Sarah. Sarah <laughs> and Karen looking very strong. 31's where we find Sonia and Jamelia. 38, Sally and Roger, not too far ahead. Roger, though, you know what you have to do. Find a nice low scoring answer to bring you back into the game. Good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put six more Carol synonyms up on the board, and here they are. We have got Great Sovereign Vaxlav, GKW. Previously, in King Williams's Metropolis, OIRDC, unstirring, 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 SSS. -S -S. Off in a feeding trough, AIAM. Our small settlement south of Jerusalem, <laughs> OLTOB, and Tiny Ass. LD. <laughs> I'll read those all again. Great Sovereign Vaxlav, GKW. Previously in King Williams's Metropolis, OIRDC. Unstirring, 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 SSS. Off in a feeding trough, AIAM. Ah, small settlement, south of Jerusalem, OLTOB. And tiny ass, LD. Karen. Mm. Mm. I tell you, what, if you score 23 or less, you're straight in to the next round, even this early. I quite like go for the bottom one, but I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go for Once in Royal David City. OK, Once in Royal David City. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Here is your red line. If you can get below that, you're straight through to the head to head. It's right. Go, go. Look at that, not bad at all. 26, good enough, I think. Oh, Taking your total, your total neatly up to 40. Yeah, written by Mrs. C.F. Alexander, who also wrote All Things Bright and Beautiful, mm. and There is a Green Hill. Mm. She was prolific. She was. She was the Rob Davis of her time. She certainly was. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now, um, Jamelia. Yes. Jamelia, you're on 31. Mm -hmm. We need a score of eight or less from you. What? <laughs> at this stage. <laughs> oh, um, OK. Uh, I'm really confident about four of them, and the one that I'm not confident about, I still think I might know it, and I think it might be the best risk to take. Uh, OK, I'm just going to go with one that I know. Um, great Sovereign Vak Vaklav. Um, good King Wenceslas. <laughs> yeah, nobody knows how to pronounce that. It's fine. Okay. Um, good King Wenceslas. Um, here is your red line. So it's there. Yeah. <laughs> There's your red line. Um, let's see how you do. Something to aim for. It's right. Oh, it's not bad, Jamelia. Not bad at all. 37 takes your total up to 68. <laughs> Well played, Jamelia. It's the old joke, isn't it? How does Wenceslas like his pizza? Deep pan, crisp and even. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Roger, <sighs> we need a score of 29 or less from you. Do you want to talk us through the board? Um, yeah, Little Donkey's the bottom one. Um, often a feeling it's away in a manger and sleep, sleep, sleep. It's in the town of Bethlehem. Um, Away in a manger. Away in a manger, says Roger. Here is your red line. Can you get below that? Let's find out with away in a manger. It's right. <laughs> 46. <laughs> Taking your total up to 84. Uh, let's uh, fill in the scores of the other ones. We'll start with Tiny Ass. Well, do you want to have a go at the bottom one? Little Donkey, yeah. yeah. Uh, that would have scored you 57 points. The small settlement, you're quite right, is Old Little Town of Bethlehem. That would have scored 45. Uh, and Unstirring, Unstirring, Unstirring. It's not Sleep, Sleep, Sleep. 
I know the German. The German is Stiller, Stiller, Stiller. So I'm guessing still, it's still, 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 still is the yeah. correct yeah. answer. Yeah, still, 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 still. And that's the best answer on the board by a mile. That would have scored three points very well done if you said that. Uh, thank you very much indeed. So we find ourselves at the end of our second round and we have to say goodbye to another of our pairs, Roger and Sally. I'm afraid it's you. I'm so sorry, far too soon to be sending home. It's been a real treat having you here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Roger and Sally. <laughs> but for our two remaining pairs, it's now time for the head-to-head. Congratulations, Karen and Sarah, Sonia and Jamelia. You're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,500. There we are. <laughs> so this is the part where we decide who goes through to the final to play for that jackpot, and we do it by making you go head-to-head. -head. But the good news is you can now start playing as a pair, so you can chat before you give your answers, and the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Well, this is very exciting. It's Band-Aid versus Band-Aid. In fact, it's oh. original <laughs> Band-Aid versus Band-Aid 2 versus Band-Aid 20. Oh, <laughs> best of luck to both bands aid. Let's play the head-to-head. Here is your first question, and it concerns famous people with Father Christmas. What? Richard. I'll show you five pictures now of famous people, all with Father Christmas, just looking for the famous person. Yeah, OK, thank you very much. Uh, let's reveal our five famous people with Father Christmas. And here they come. We have got A... B... C. D. And E. There we are. Five famous people with Father Christmas. Karen and Sarah, you are our low scorers, so you get to go first. Shall we? I don't know. Well, we don't know C or D, so we're going with B, Shirley Temple. Shirley Temple, say Karen and Sarah. Uh, now, Sonia and Jamelia, do you fancy talking through the rest of that board? Mariah's A, isn't she? Yeah. And E's Wills. Sorry, can I call him Wills? He's not... <laughs> that's, is, that, is that really yeah. bad? Yeah, Sorry. No, I think that's, that's nice. I think more people will go for Prince William. Yes, yes. I've already Go had with Mariah, maybe. <laughs> Shall we Mariah just... Carey. Mariah Carey. There we are. Thank you very much indeed. Mariah Carey, say Sonia and Jamelia. So we have Shirley Temple and Mariah Carey. Karen and Sarah have gone for Shirley Temple for B. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. It's right. Ooh. Down it goes to 41. <laughs> 41 for Shirley Temple. What is Mariah Carey going to score? Sonia and Jamelia have gone for that for A. Let's see how many people said Mariah. It's right. 65. Shut up. Not bad. <laughs> but well done, Karen and Sarah. After one question, you're up 1 0. There's two very, very hard answers there. C is the, uh, the model and actress Molly Sims. Well done if you said that. Nothing at all for that. Well done. Uh, if you watch Project Runway, you will recognise D. So Zach Posen would have scored you one point. <laughs> He's very happy, doesn't he? Yeah. Now, if you've upset Wills, I'm about to as well, because that is Prince William, but four of our 100 said that was Prince Edward. So, uh, oh. sorry, sir. It is Prince William would have scored 85 points. Thank you very much indeed. OK, here comes your second question. Now, Sonia and Jamelia, you get to answer this first, but you have to win it, stay in the game, so very yes. best of luck. Our second question this evening is all about members of Monty Python. What? Richard. It five clues now to people who've been members of Monty Python at some point over the years. OK, let's reveal our five clues, and here they come. We have got... Wrote the book and lyrics for the musical Monty Python's Spamalot, plays Basil in the sitcom Fawlty Towers, Studied medicine at Cambridge, plays Brian in Life of Brian, subject of the 1989 documentary series Around the World in 80 Days, and director of the 2009 film The Imaginarium of Dr Parnassus. I'll read those again. Wrote the book and lyrics for the musical Monty Python's Spamalot, plays Basil in the sitcom Fawlty Towers, studied medicine at Cambridge, plays Brian in Life of Brian, 
subject of the 1989 documentary series Around the World in 80 Days, and director of the 2009 film The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. There we are. Sonia and Jamelia will go first. Oh. Okay. I know the yeah. I think that's really easy. Okay. I can't think. Oh. We don't know. We only know one. Okay. So we're just, we're just gonna yeah. have to go for the obvious one. Sorry. Um, Basil in Forty Towers. John Cleese. <laughs> John Cleese for Basil in Forty Towers, say Sonia and Jamelia. Karen and Sarah, do you want to talk us through the rest of that board? I think the Eric top Idle. one might be Eric Idle. We think maybe Graham Chapman and Michael Palin. Is it Terry Gilliam, the last one? I don't know. Is it him? We're going to go with Graham Chapman. Graham Chapman. Graham Chapman for Study oh, Medicine. Sorry, Cambridge, yeah. yeah. Cambridge, OK. Um, so in the order they were given, we have got John Cleese from Sonia and Jamelia. Let's see how many of our 100 people said John Cleese. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. John Cleese scoring 96 there. Um, Karen and Sarah have gone for Graham Chapman. Studied medicine at Cambridge, plays Brian in Life of Brian. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Graham Chapman. It is Graham Chapman. Very well done indeed. That wins the point for you. <laughs> Look at that. Very well done. 22. <laughs> Brilliant. Karen and Sarah, after only two questions, you are straight through to the final 2-0. Yeah, very well played. You know what? You took us through the board perfectly as well. You got every single oh, one of them oh, right. So you could have said any. You could have said well any guessed. of them. Uh, it is Eric Idle for Monty Python's Spam a lot. It's actually the best answer on the board. Twenty-one points for that. Uh, the 1989 documentary. I'm going to say he wasn't the subject of it. He was the presenter of it. The subject was the mm. world, mm. really, if you mm. think about it. Mm. Uh, it was Michael Palin. It's a big score of seventy-two points. Uh, and the director was Terry Gilliam. Right about oh, well that done. as well. And Twenty-three points for Terry yeah. Gilliam. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So we are at the end of our head-to-head -head round. The pair leaving us, I'm afraid. Sonia and Jamelia, it is yes. you. It's been such Aww. a treat having you. Thank you so much for coming and playing. Um, happy Christmas, and uh, Christmas. please come and play happy again. Christmas. Sonia and Jamelia. Thank you. <laughs> happy Christmas. <laughs> but for Karen and Sarah, it's now time for our point to final. Congratulations, Karen and Sarah. You fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. Smashing. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot for your charities. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £2,500. There it is. <laughs> well, this, I think, is perfectly fitting. It's our Christmas number one special show, and we have you, two thirds of Banana Rama. You sang on the very first Band Aid, you've sung on subsequent Band Aid recordings, and here you are in the final for the second time. Yes. You've already got one pointless trophy at home, you now get another. That, that bookcase yes, is complete. Just missed out on the jackpot last time. Got to get it this time. So, yes. What would you like to see come up? What's going to help you win that jackpot? Well, not, not films, not sport. Not sport. <laughs> um, not anagrams, really. No, that leaves some stuff. <laughs> some scope. Yeah, well, four things will appear, four okay. categories on this board. Okay. You have to hope there's one thing up there you like the look of. Today's special Christmas selection looks like this. London football oh. teams, <laughs> things in between... Not films. Classic rock lyrics, bride films. Things in between, what would that be? No idea. Bride films. I don't know any bride films. Either classic rock or things in between. Should we punt at things in between? OK, things in between. Things in between it is, Richard. OK, very, very best of luck. Uh, one of these is a sport one, but you don't have to worry about that. The other two aren't, I promise. Uh, <laughs> you can choose whichever you want. Uh, here are your three Christmas choices. We're looking for any man who won the, uh, the British Open Golf Championship between Fred Daly and John uh, Daly, yeah. between 47 and 95. Looking for anyone who served as US president between oh, William Henry Harrison no. and Benjamin Harrison. Or we're looking for any country of the world that comes alphabetically between the Marshall Islands and the Solomon Islands. So any country of the world that's a sovereign state and a member of the UN in its own right yeah, that comes okay. between the Marshall Fifty Islands one. and the Solomon Islands alphabetically. Very, very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. Now, you've got up to a minute to come up with three answers. 
all you need to win the jackpot for your charities is for just one of your answers to be pointless. You don't have to answer all three categories. Just focus on whichever one you like the look of. Are you ready? Yes. yes. OK, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK. It's got to be N O P Q R. Rwanda. Yeah. Rwanda. Um, what else would that be? N. What's N? Amon. Nigeria. Nigeria. Nepal. Nepal. Oh, it's so difficult. M-N-O-O. Among, I can't remember the thing. P. Paraguay. Peru. Um, Philippines. Q. Qatar. Yes. We, Philippines might not be an obvious P. Would it be because it sounds F? You know, I'm hopeless. <laughs> um, I'm just a guy. No, we haven't. Ten seconds left. Ten seconds. So, and, uh, just... Okay, that is your time up. Let's have your three answers, and if you could say which category you're answering in. Oof, okay. They're going to be all from the bottom. Countries. Countries. Um, <laughs> what have you got? Samoa. 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 I'm stuck on stuff. Rwanda. Um, Rwanda. Yeah. Is Papua New Guinea a country? Or not? I don't know. Should we guess we'll it? We'll go with that. Papua, Papua New Guinea. Okay, go with Papua Guinea. New Guinea. OK, so we have got Samoa, we've got Rwanda, we've got Papua New Guinea. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? Samoa. No idea. Samoa, but last. <laughs> Least likely to be pointless. Rwanda. Rwanda. Papua New Guinea goes in the middle. And the other one's probably wrong. <laughs> OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order then, and here they are. We have got uh. Rwanda, Papua New Guinea, Samoa. Well, they look good on the board, they don't do. they? Yeah. yeah. Lovely answers. They did last time. Let's have, well... <laughs> how close did you get last time? One. <sighs> Got to beat that. Got to beat that this time. <laughs> if you were to win the jackpot this time, which charities are you playing for? Um, mine will be Guide Dogs for the Blind. And I'm playing for the South West MS Therapy Centre, where my brother is a, both a patient and a volunteer. Very good indeed. <laughs> Two wonderful charities there. Let's hope one of these answers wins that jackpot for you. Very, very best of luck. Rwanda was your first answer. The one you thought was probably least likely to be pointless. Remember, only one of these has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. So for £2,500, let's see how many people named Rwanda as a country coming alphabetically between the Marshall Islands and the Solomon Islands. Rwanda. It's right. It just has to be pointless now, and your charities will be £2,500 richer. Down goes Rwanda, through the teens. Are we in single figures? Yes, we are. Down we go to four. Not bad at all. Four for Rwanda. That's a brilliant score. Sadly, <laughs> not, not pointless. Enough. <laughs> so let's move on to your second answer, Papua New Guinea. Now, again, we're looking for countries that have come alphabetically between the Marshall Islands and the Solomon Islands. Let's find out how many of our 100 people said Papua New Guinea for £2,500. Is it pointless? Again, it's right. Rwanda was right, took us down to four. Papua New Guinea is also right. Now it takes us down through the teens. Into single figures, still going down. We're passing forward, down it goes. Rwanda oh! 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 That's what happened last time. This happened last time. Yeah. Yes. You've still got another answer. Well, and then the last time, last one was wrong. It's all going in the right direction. <laughs> it's going in the same We've gone from way. four to one. <laughs> Obviously, it's not pointless. Yeah. If it's it still is one. If it carries on in that ratio, you'll score a quarter for this last one. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Let's ignore that um, and turn our attention to the third answer, Samoa. It just sort of has to be right. It sounds like a fabulous answer. Let's see if it's right and if it's pointless. Your charities will be £2,500 richer. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Samoa. Is it pointless? It's right! Your first answer was Rwanda, took us down to four. Your second answer was Papua New Guinea, took us down to one. Samoa, single figures, down we go. Passing forward, down we go, you're passing forward. Yeah! Congratulations, Samoa, with a 
find us out to a clean as you go home with that jackpot of £2,500 for your charity. Brilliant. <laughs> Very well done. Merry Christmas, everybody. That was hard earned. Terrific performance all the way through. And lovely, you. lovely result for your charities as well. Um, let's take a look at the pointless answers in the different categories. Uh, you may have answered different ones at home. We'll start with the golf. You don't need to listen to any of this. Uh, you've, won, <laughs> you've won the money already. Uh, Ian Baker Finch, pointless answer. Mark Kalkovecki and Nick Price, Peter Thompson, Bill Rogers, Bobby Locke, Henry Cotton, Johnny Miller, Kel Nagel, Max Faulkner, Roberto DiVincenzo, Tom Weiskopf, and Tony Lima were the pointless answers there. Very well done if you said one. The US presidents, eight pointless answers here. Andrew Johnson, Chester A. Arthur, James Garfield, James Buchanan, you could have had Franklin Pierce, James Polk, John Tyler, or Zachary Taylor. Uh, now, the countries, every single one of them was an M or an S, the pointless answers, apart from two, one of which you said actually, Qatar. Uh, which is, that was a pointless yeah. answer. Uh, uh, Mongolia, <laughs> Singapore, Slovakia, Micronesia, Moldova, Monaco, Panama, uh, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Samoa, San Marino, Sao Tome and Principe, Saudi Arabia, Senegal and Serbia. They were the pointless answers. Very well done if you got one. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. And thanks once again to our winning players, Karen Thank and you. Sarah, Thank who take much. away Thank today's you. jackpot of £2,500 for their charities. Well done. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on point with celebrities. Meanwhile, a Merry Christmas from Richard. Uh, yeah, and from Zandra and me, thank you so much for watching all year. We do really, really appreciate it. Have a lovely Christmas. If Christmas is a hard time for you, then have a peaceful one. To play us out, we have the lovely Summerdew accompanying my good friend and great singer Zander with a lovely little version of Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> You better watch out, you'd better not cry, you'd better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list, he's checking it twice, he's gonna find out who's been naughty and nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping He knows when you're awake He knows if you've been bad or good So be good for goodness sake Oh, you'd better watch out You'd better not cry You'd better not pout I'm telling you why Santa Claus is coming to town he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Oh, you'd better watch out. You'd better not cry. You'd better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming. Santa Claus is coming. Santa Claus is